Hello and welcome back to the channel to discuss all things aviation and you'll be welcoming you back today. We are trying to answer a question that has become notorious over the past few months. People writing in and asking us, I'm in metric, I'm in my high school if yeah, outside of South Africa, and I need to know what subjects I should concentrate on for me to be able to pursue a career in aviation after I finish. So we try to unpack those. We will use the guidelines you know, drawn from the Department of Basic Education of the South African government to answer those particular questions. So the department requires that uh, high schoolers must take four compulsory um, subjects. The one compulsory subject is that uh, they must uh, pick up two official languages. So from South Africa's 11 official languages, um, high schoolers must, you know, pick up two official languages. Obviously, it makes sense for you to take up English because you will need that for aviation later on. So English is an official language in South Africa and then in all there are 11 official languages in South Africa. So the department requires that you must just take two official languages. Now the requirement is that one of them must be English. One of them must be English. So apart from uh, the languages, metrics must also choose mathematics or maths literacy. They must also choose uh, life orientation as modules that they should do in their uh, high school and then there are three optional um, subjects that they must do that are drawn from a list of 25 provided by the department of basic education amongst those subjects the ones that i thought would be necessary for you as an aviator would be number one geography and number two um, life sciences or yes life sciences and then um, physical science now let's discuss each and every one of those subjects I've just talked about. And we start with English. We know that English is widely spoken globally. I am not here saying English is a global language because there are areas where English will be useless for you. You know, it won't help you in any way. They won't understand a word of English. There are territories like that. But generally speaking, it's a language that can, you know, almost take you to many, many places. And in aviation, it's a very central language. It's fundamental to the operations of aviation. The International Civil Aviation Organization endorsed it as the language for aviation. I mean, you fly into any airspace, ATC will be speaking English. You have to speak English. The syllabus also for the aviation training here is also done in English. The exams at CAA are done in English as well. So you will need to know English. You need to pass English. It's, 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 it's imperative that you do so. Now, I've heard people complain that, but English is not my first language. English is what, what, English is what, what. Like, listen, it's not my first language either. But you cannot budge into a career and expect people to change the career for you. Suddenly, they must now present, you know, aviation training. And aviation must now be conducted in the language that you desire. It's just not going to work like that. It's such a global phenomenon. It's imperative that we agree on one language and we all learn it. If English is not your first language, hard luck. Just get down to learning. Just get down to reading more. Get down to improving your language. It's your duty to do so. If you want to join aviation, unfortunately, you just have to improve your language. You have to improve your English. There's not two ways about it. So English is critical. If you're in high school and you are wondering whether English is important for you, it definitely is. Nobody will hire a pilot who cannot converse in English. That pilot will be a danger to themselves, a danger to the world of aviation. Remember that the CIA exams are conducted in English. Remember that your license must be endorsed with your language proficiency. You must pass a language proficiency test. That language proficiency is testing your ability to command the English language. It has to go onto your license. So there's no two ways about it. There's no beating about the bush. If your English is not good right now and you're in high school, get down to reading more. Read more. I know that today's generation doesn't want to read. They want to read Twitter, which is 150 characters. I'm not going to take you anywhere. Read. Read real books. Read anything you can lay your, 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 your hands on. It's the only way you can understand and grow your vocabulary and grow your English skills. So it's important. English is important whether you're going to be studying at a university you're going to be studying uh, at a flight academy you need to command that language without it you're going nowhere the next subject is uh, physical science now this is very critical you will be you know calculating density you'll be calculating gravity you'll be calculating speed velocity you'll be calculating gravity mass volume weight and, and, and stuff like that there's a lot of those calculations in aviation. We need to be strong in physics. It will help you a long way in your aviation training. You can still thumb suck it, 
but it will take you forever to finish your, your license because these are questions you must pass and remember our threshold in aviation is 75 percent it's not like in high school where i don't know whether this is correct but i've heard it's in some spaces it's 30 percent which is absolute nonsense um and, and but the general passing mark in most industries is what 50 percent you know half you're good enough in aviation it's 75 percent that's how high the threshold is so you need to know these subjects and command them very very well so you need to give it your all you need to embrace physics it's going to help you with your calculations in most of your flight training and even after flight training when you are working you will need to have knowledge of physics for you to calculate you know how much runway you need um, and, and whether you can actually take off with uh, a particular density altitude at a particular aerodrome Geography. Geography is very, very important. I mean, you will understand the formation of the Earth, the atmosphere, and everything there. You will need those, um, that knowledge when you are training. I mean, for your navigation, you need to understand your map reading, and geography would have oriented you in that regard as well. So it, it's critical for you to understand geography or to take geography as a subject in high school. It will come in handy when you go for your aviation training. Life sciences. Of course, you have to understand the human anatomy. You must understand the human brain. You must understand the lungs, the eyes, the ears. Everything that you will need when you are dealing with your human performance once you start your aviation training. You need to understand what happens if you drink at altitude. What happens if you fly above 10,000 feet without supplemental oxygen? You need to understand those things. You know, you need to understand how a human being sleeps for how long and what happens in each, uh, in, in each uh, period of sleep. What happens if you wake him up in the middle of that and you throw him in the cockpit you need to understand how the human being functions you will be tested on that under the module called human performance and you must pass it so you know if you have your biology your life sciences that will come in handy when you are dealing with that particular module during your flight training and now to the main main component of this mathematics versus maths literacy maths literacy look uh, syllabus changes i don't know what the government is doing but the the government will change the syllabus now and again sometimes for the good sometimes you know it, it just turns out bad and i believe that's where where math literacy comes in you if you if, if you really really want to do um aviation after your high school please do mathematics pure real mathematics not this thing called uh, math literacy where you just i don't even know what they teach them but it will not take you there you know do real math the calculations in aviation are complex. The formula is complex. You, you will need to calculate lots of things. You know, every subject involves one calculation or another. And if you are not good in mathematics, trust me, you will not be able to get the 75% that the CAA requires for you to pass. You will be wasting your money or the money of whoever is paying for you. So stay away from math literacy. Do real mathematics if you really, really want to um, excel in aviation. Because math literacy is all about getting you to understand the basic, you know, basic, basic language of mathematics. The basics of, you know, how maths operates. That's not what CAA is looking for. CAA is not going to be asking you those, you know, teddy bear fluffy questions that maths lit would give you. CIA will be asking you real questions that require real formula, complex questions. So stay away from anything that doesn't prepare you for the path that you want to take. If you want to study, go and study the arts. If you want to go and study, you know, a uh, playwright and be an actress or an actor somewhere, go ahead, do that. But if you really, really want to get into the cockpit, mathematics is what you must take as a subject in high school. You will need it. Otherwise, you won't become a pilot. So for my high school people out there who have been um, writing in and asking what subject they should take, I think we've just tabled them right here in this episode and I think that will help you in choosing your, your, your subjects going forward. And um, continue to click like and on our videos and to share them with your buddies and to continue watching. I mean, it's the only way we can grow this channel to reach out to other African children out there and make Africa great again. Whatever you do, whether you're in high school or not, remember with every hour the cockpit back on, even at high school level, it's a question of hours, the game of hours. If you don't put in the hours, you are going nowhere. Keep putting in the hours towards your aviation training, towards, you know, achieving your goal of becoming a pilot one day 
And until next time, Angela Dube here signing out and saying chess.